grace of God, even if we don't deal with them like we used to, we ought to, we ought to at least leave a, the door cracked. So again, if you ever need me, I am here. Wow. Lord, that's why I brought y'all on here tonight. Cause I needed y'all. I needed y'all. I, mean, I needed y'all. That's good teaching. Man of God. That's good teaching. Ooh. That's, uh, that's why I brought y'all on here tonight. That's why I brought y'all on. Yeah. That's, you see, you see LP, you see why I brought him on? Oh yeah. He the truth. Yeah. He the truth. That's why I brought him on. Uh, so let, let's, uh, let's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to switch some stuff around now because I, I saw I've made a mistake, but I'm trying to fix it right quick. But listen, uh, mm, we're going to make this, let's, let's make this next transition because I've heard this term a lot, especially since the pandemic, you know, pandemic, you know, Donald Trump came on the air and told us for the first time in life that a place where the universal church, universal doors had been ajar since the beginning of time had been there well since jesus instituted said that you know that uh my house shall be called a house of prayers that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it said all these things you know and, uh, you know whosoever will let them come all those things right but all of a sudden now the doors of the church were closed and we couldn't go we had to worship at home in our pajamas and people were sighted if they were to, uh they had church in their churches right because people were getting COVID, and you know and, they started naming some churches COVID centers, you know, because a lot of people still had trying to have services and all these types of things. People and we couldn't go. And so people were at home, you know, and then all of a sudden now people having to survive and prosperity gospel had done what prosperity gospel did to the body of Christ, right? And here we are, you know, and people just we were in a hurt state. And then all of a sudden people started saying church hurt. They didn't want to come, they didn't want to go back. I'm hurt. And then Pastor Evans, I'm start with you, because I saw two pastors at that time. They had a conversation, right? They had a conversation, and uh, they were talking about uh, church hurt. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it, Pastor, it was like they were angry with people for being hurt. <laughs> it was like they were saying, "But what about us? We hurt too. What about the pastor? Pastor, do this, that, that. nigga, go get." Me. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I apologize. If you hurt, go to a retreat. <laughs> Go get some therapy. Go get some counseling. But if you're responsible for souls and these souls are telling you that they're hurting rather than penalize or ostracize them for hurting, you want to say, I hurt too. That was so yeah. Yeah. counterproductive for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then those cats to me, and I knew them, we, we weren't friends, but we knew each other. They had the most dogmatic leadership style that I had ever seen. You know what I'm saying? But, and you probably hurt people. I, I knew th these kind of cats would cuss their people out in front of people just to show how strong they were. And I'm of the opinion that if you got true power, the test of true power is when you're willing to give that power away. And if you're not willing to give power away, then you don't have any power, right? You're stuck at the first stage of leadership. And the first stage of leadership is positional power. They don't really care about you. They just care about the position. And whoever occupies a position is who they're going to respect because you haven't earned the position of leadership in their life. And you want to sit here and beat somebody up who's already telling you that they're hurting. Help me out with that, Pastor. You, 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 you got to break that down for me. But when I've, I've listened to both sides of, of the argument. Um, okay. You know, people often say, you know, you don't, you don't, you didn't quit your job. They hurt you on your job. But now, but now he, here's, here's the thing. Look at the idea of the church being a refuge or sanctuary. Um, they're, they're, I don't know a person who look, you know, maybe when you catch in hell at home, you can't wait to get to work. But now usually work is not your sanctuary. Work is not your refuge. You can use it in a time of trouble just to get away and, and to keep life going with some level of normalcy. But when it comes to the sanctuary, when it comes to the refuge, we have to be careful how we interact with people. We have to be careful how we allow others to interact with people. So I want to know on, on my staff, uh, uh, how, how does the secretary talk to people? Mm. Because I don't, want, I don't misrepresent Christ. 
then I can't have anybody misrepresenting Christ. I don't want a deacon misrepresenting Christ. Wow. Uh, uh, and while you're talking, I wrote down meek uh, and and humility equal power. You yes. see, you don't have to be loud. You don't have to be boisterous. You surely don't have to use intimidation in the church, meek and humble. But now you said something earlier about knowing who you are. I think it goes back to that. Now I've been pastor for 15 years. I've never said I was the pastor. I've never announced to the congregation. That I'm the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, hold you on, know. hold on. You gotta get one. Hold on. You know you deserve one on that one, right? Hold on. Man of God, put your yeah. cash out in the <laughs> put your on. cash out in the truck in the in the in the in the put hold on. <laughs> He said, put your cash out. He want to bless you, Pastor Evans. He said, put your cash out. Put your cash out, bro, man. <laughs> but go ahead. That's all awesome. Yeah, That's so awesome. Go ahead and finish what you're saying. So, so I just think we do have to understand that sometimes people come into the church out of the world and they're not looking for the same pain that they experience in the world. Come on, man. Say that again. Say that again. Well, uh, y'all got now, so I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, you, you, it, it has to be something different. You know, it has to be. We can't act the same. We can't treat people the same. Uh, so, it, so it goes back to the character of Christ. Uh, so, so, so it, it, it is the sanctuary. Wow. And, and we have to make sure that it is for all people. That's good, LP. That's your area. You get you get you're certified in that area. So what what have you noticed? Why are people saying they're being hurt by the church? What what are some of the reasons they're giving? Well, one of the realities is, you know, when, when people are talking about church hurt, they're not necessarily talking about hurt from the ecclesia, the 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 actual church, the called out ones, the called out ones. You feel me? That's that's not what's hurting them. That what's hurting them is the organization of church, not the organism of church. The organization of church is usually headed by a narcissistic leader. And if a narcissistic leader is heading that organization, there's going to be a lot of deflecting. There's going to be a lot of gaslighting. There's going to be uh, a lot of blame shifting. There's going to be a lot of these different things. And all of these things are mental and emotional abuse. You know what I'm saying? To abuse the sheep. And so you have a lot of people who have definitely been subject to this type of abuse right and so what you saying that the the pastor has said well what about me i'm hurt too that's that's a deflection you feel me and so a narcissistic leader will deflect like that you know what i'm saying and turn the the you know they may have caused the issue but they'll flip it and make you the culprit you know what i'm saying you know and 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 unfortunately a lot of our organizations are called if we call it what it really is, you know what I'm saying? And a cult leader is always going to be a narcissist and a narcissistic cult leader is going to do things to make the people feel like they are the problem. You know what I'm saying? If they indeed are the problem, but that true ecclesia, the called out ones, you know, as I'm listening to this man of God, he made the statement. He said, you know, I've never had to tell the church that I'm the pastor. Yeah. That's so powerful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to throw your weight around. You know what I'm saying? A, a great leader don't have to throw their weight, weight around. Everybody's going to know you're the leader. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to remind people that you're the leader. You know what I'm saying? One thing about it, you know, I, I'm i sure back in y'all's day, y'all was that dude back in the day. You feel me? You didn't have to convince everybody else that you was that dude when you walked down the hall at school. You didn't have to convince everybody that you was that dude when you pulled up on the scene. You know what I'm saying? Ride clean. You know what I mean? You, you didn't have to tell nobody. Everybody knew 
you was that dude. And so the same thing when it comes to us making that, that shift and we got into the body of Christ and we operating and functioning according to his will, you know what I'm saying? We are now letting our light so shine so that men see our good works and glorify our father, right? And so the same way in the past when we was in the streets or where we was at school or whatever the case may be, we was shining for the devil. You know what I'm saying? And we was letting everybody see the foolishness that we did. And so now that we're in the body of Christ, we just let our light so shine. You know, we the light. Jesus said you the light of the world. Light ain't got to talk. Jesus said you the salt of the earth. Salt don't talk. A city on a hill that can't be hid. A city on a hill don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk. You know, and so saying all that to say, man, I mean, we just have to we have to understand that it's a remnant. It's a remnant. And God is blessing me by exposing me to those who are in that remnant. You know what I'm saying? James, when I came across you and, you know, I'm a, you know, we talking and this and the other. But when I heard you share that word, I'm like, oh, my God. This dude is the truth. You know what I'm saying? And so like I'm you know, God is exposing me and continually showing me these individuals, you know, as I'm listening to the pastor and he's saying certain key things that's making me know. OK, OK. Yeah. Yeah. He 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 one of them. Yeah. He a leader. Yeah. Yeah. He a kingdom leader. Yeah. That's what we looking for. That's what we need. You feel me? So that remnant, man, God is making that remnant be known, you know, and I'm just. I mean, I'm sorry, man. Y'all, please forgive me for my passion. It's just I just get excited because when I gave my life to the Lord in 2001 on the college of the historic Miles College, I just I was I was on this high in knowing that finally I'm on the right side. You get what I'm saying? And then as I experienced all of the challenges that I experienced, you know, what I'm saying from church people, I'm like. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I thought I was on the right side. And then here it is years later, whenever I'm having encounters with individuals like y'all, I'm like, yes, I'm on the right side. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But here's 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 the here's the here's the paradigm shift is. And uh Dennis Pittman won that one. Uh Elder Lisa Smith is up to the one. She got the first one, uh, anxiety, second one, depression. Uh, Dennis Pittman got recovery. So he's uh, it's two to one right now. But hear this, and I'm glad you say what you said. You said you were a young man on Miles College. You received up, you know, received Christ, da da da. And you were delicate. You were in a delicate state, right? You know, I mean, you know, you were a baby Christian. You know, you could man, if I, it would we would have been crazy to try to put a steak in your mouth when you still need a formula and milk, right? Because you know, babies have to be handled a certain way. I had a conversation. Uh, no, you did not. I'm looking at it in my screen, uh, Elder Smith. Do I need to make a copy for it and send it to you? I'm not going to cheat you. Trust me. I got you. I'm looking at it in my screen, sweetheart. I promise. In fact, I'm going to take a picture so you can see it. That's one thing I don't do is cheat. Uh, and I know you're joking with me, but still, I'm, I'm going to take a picture. Dennis Pippen won that one. I'll send it to you in your inbox in just a moment. But, uh, but people are so delicate. Delicate, delicate, delicate. And you have to be careful allowing delicate people, uh, putting certain people around delicate people. My pastor and I had a conversation today, and my pastor has been pastor for 54 years, 54 years. So he's been, he's the epitome of a pastor. One day, LP, I just, I was chatting with him. Now, this captain pastor, 54 years, got seven, 8,000 members. Uh, I'm not, I don't go by yours, I go by mine. Uh, but there it is, I just sent it to you. Uh, but, uh, 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 L, but, uh, 54 years. So one day I asked him, I said, why do you come to the church every day? He said, well, I just come sit around until somebody needs me. I don't know when somebody's going to need me, so I want to be ready. But today he said something. He said, you know, you have people that can go to work and be on the job and be a sanitation worker, but get voted in as the chairman of the deacon board. They don't have any leadership skills. They've never been trained, but they got voted in. You know? And then you're letting these sometimes untrained people uh, ungifted people handle delicate people. You understand what I'm saying? And they don't have the same passion. They don't have the same heart that you have for the people. And you're leaving those people exposed. And he said, even those people, that's the only significance that some of them have. And when their position passes, maybe you've experienced this, when their position is taken away from them, it hurts them because that's the only significance of, you know, job or position 
or whatever they held, that position uh, identify, uh, defined them, if you will. You understand what I'm saying? Have you ever came across that, Pastor Evans, where somebody was used to a certain position in church, and when that position was taken away from them, they uh, resp responded adversely? I've seen brothers who were uh, under the consideration for being a deacon. Okay. And uh, it took me years to make a, a decision. And uh, there was a brother who said, I took too long. He left the church. Wow. Now, now, now for the brothers who remained, they came to me and said, look, what we were doing, we were doing before y'all ever told us that, that we were being considered because we were already working. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it, it weeds out those who, who are probably not, not mature enough to, to actually lead because again, wow. Have to, you have to deal with your own personal stuff. Yes. You no. Know? Um, and then you have to deal with the stuff of other people. Wow. And, and and I think some sometimes either one of those things can break you. One of the best advice a pastor ever gave me, I said, man, how have you been able to, to pastor for so long? He said, I don't start no mess at the church. <laughs> wow. Said, I, I don't start no mess. If mess comes to me, if people attack me, he said, but yeah. I've been, I start no mess and uh and and he still works for the lord in joy so so yeah i mean we have to be ready to deal with it but we have to be ready to deal with our own stuff also and the thing is, is that if a person lp if i if i if you and i are in the same setting right you know we say we're at the at a, at a show and you're sitting on the end and you know and, I'm, and i can even go to the bathroom and i walk out and i don't even feel it but i accidentally step on your toe and you, I didn't feel it, but you say, hey, bro, you stepped on my toe. At that moment, nope, that ain't relentless. Look at it again. So you can't get that one. Uh, but uh, but uh, that's not relentless. But uh, if, I, you, if you tell me you stepped on your toe, I stepped on your toe, then in that moment, I, I just need to turn around and apologize because I don't want to hurt you. I mean, because I hurt you. And I, and I did it unintentionally. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I... See, when I got up to walk to the bathroom, it wasn't like I got up uh, and said, let me step on his toe on the way out. But a byproduct of me going to the bathroom is I stepped on your toe. I hurt you. So in that moment, as a man, I should say, I apologize, right? And there have been times in the church where we've done something unbeknownst to us. You know what I'm saying? Or we... Uh, we, we said something unintentional. Or we, you know, sometimes it might have... As a prophet... You don't always say great things. You know what I'm saying? You don't always say favorable things. You know, you know, everybody want to be prophesied a house in a car. You know, everybody want to check in the mail. But sometimes, you know, you might say, get your house in order because, you know, if, if you don't, you're going to die. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what a real prophet does, right? I guess. Uh, so with that being said, uh, if we offend somebody, <laughs> even if I even if I, if I offended them in word, I'm going to say, hey, listen, you know, I, I'm not. You know, I'm just doing what God told me to do. You know what I'm saying? No, you take it up to the guy. If you pray about it, I'm sure God's going to reveal to you. But I'm not going to be uh, overbearing and try to hurt them even more, especially because, and this is the other thing I, I always thought, I also thought of, Neil P. I'm going to get you to jump in again, because you talked about the traumatic triggers a minute ago. For these cats who were saying they were leaders and they were being, you know, they're dogmatic leaders, da, 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 all these types of things, and they're upset for people for being hurt, and they're saying, I'm hurt. Well, don't hurt people, hurt people. <laughs> I mean, and if you're if you're hurting, like I said, Negro, go on a retreat. Yeah, sabbatical. Take, take a sabbatical. Refresh yourself. Because if you've been doing this for 10 years with no breaks, or, you know, and you got everybody's, you're not, you're, you're, God didn't call you to be God. He got that down. God called you to be the under shepherd, not under shepherd. That means you got somebody you can go to when things get rough. When things get hard, if I had a situation about a month and a half ago, a rough situation in my home. It's personal. But one of the first people I called was who? Dr. Evans. And Dr. Evans gave me a whole different perspective on what. Now, brother, you might not like it. <laughs> but. For the sake of, and I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm go. I would recommend, and I said, Ugh. 
You know what I'm saying? Because I was hurting in that moment and I needed to be healed. And uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. It, when I was hurting and I needed to be healed, he didn't put peroxide on it. He put alcohol on it and it hurts. I'm already hurting. You put some mo something else on it that made it hurt more. But guess what? It was like surgery with no anesthesia. It was hurting, but it was helping. And so sometimes when we put hurt on hurt, we compile the hurt. Oh, God, I'm, 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 I'm rambling a little bit now. I'm rambling a little bit now. But we're dealing with hurt people. And as we deal with hurt people, we have to be careful. You don't deal with hurt people. You, you handle them with care. Y'all can jump in anywhere. I'm just talking. I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Jump in. Look, we, we've had individuals, we've had soldiers who returned from warfare um, who, who were adjusting to, to civilian life again, who were really in a bad place, but we still wanted them to be welcome. Uh, um, I mean, some would come and look like they were so tense and there was so much pressure. We didn't want to add to that pressure. <laughs> We wanted we wanted the the sanctuary to be just what it was supposed to be, uh, not a place where they were being picked at. Uh, so one brother would wear his hat, and an usher said, "You know, will you please remove your hat?" First of all, I told him that you know nowhere in the Bible does you know it says about praying with your head uncovered. Uh, but but other than that, that's a southern hospitality thing. Let the brother let the brother keep his hat on. If just as long as he is sitting there listening, um, and and they had no no issue with that directive, but we didn't want to make a bad situation worse. Mm -hmm. So so sometimes we have to know, we do have to know how to how to gently handle people, and um, and this was a brother who I could see him doing breakfast. I could go up to him and talk to him, and he was always quiet, but he was always cool. So so I just wanted that. I didn't want to bother him. You know, it, it's, it's sometimes when we bother people in the sanctuary, we sometimes add to their frustration and pain. Got it. Finally. OK, I'm sorry. I heard you. They were struggling with that word right there. OK, she, I was going to say, listen, uh, listen, only got one eye, but she got it now. Resilient. So we have a winner now. The winner is going to be Elder Lisa Smith. She's winning a copy of Stuck on the Couch tonight. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry, Pastor. But, oh, no. but yeah, but I heard exactly what you said. You want uh, you want go ahead go ahead and expound on that. Uh, we got about five or six more minutes, then we're gonna we're gonna cut this short. Okay. But uh, and, and listen, let me put the phone number up because somebody on the call might have dealt with church hurt in and of yourself, and uh, you might want to tell somebody how you got through it, or you might not have gotten through it yet. You might be still dealing with it. It might be <laughs> keeping you from going back to the church. Don't let somebody stop you from going in and getting your spiritual refill, right? You know, I, I, I equate the church to the gas station. You know, I mean, uh, I go to the I go to the gas station, and I don't go to the gas station to hang out. I go to the gas station to get gas, you know what I'm saying? And when I go to church, I don't really go to hang out. I go to get gas, we go get my fill up, and then I go home, you know? So uh, don't let people stop you from getting, but you know, but hurt is real. And, uh, and we need to get to the genesis, as my friend just said a minute ago. Uh, he said the Genesis, and that's you know that's the twenty you know twenty first century way of saying. It. In the Bible, they say lay the axe to the root. You got to go and find out what the root of the issue is. Uh, uh, I said you won't. What are you talking about? I didn't. Oh, you, I, I don't know. I did not stay. And they left. What, what are we talking? About? Oh, you didn't leave. Okay, got you. Um, uh, but uh, go ahead, uh, LP. You want to add anything else to anybody who might be dealing with church hurt? I'm gonna leave the phone number up. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, you know, one of the one of the things that we have to deal with is um, whenever we're dealing with people in the organization we call church, we're dealing with people and people are human and humans are very imperfect. And you're going to have conflict. Conflict is inevitable. You can't get around it. The problem is we don't know how to resolve the conflict. And one of the reasons why we struggle with resolving conflict is because of our lack of being rooted and grounded in the word. Over in the book of uh, uh, the fourth chapter uh, uh, of Mark, it talks about the parable of the sower. 
And it talks about the word being sown. Some of it, the, the seed fell by the wayside. Some of it fell on stony ground. Some of it fell among thorns and some of it fell on good ground. And the scripture talks about how whenever it fell um, on the stony ground, you know, it said that they had no root in themselves. And mm -hmm. so they received the word. But when affliction and persecution arose for the word's sake, the Bible says immediately they were offended. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, that's a, a, a all due to us not being root, having no root in ourselves. We're not rooted and grounded in that word. We're not rooted and grounded in love. So when the affliction come, because the affliction going to come, yes. you get what I'm saying? It's going to come. That's why Jesus said, whosoever cometh to me, hear my sayings and do them. I will show you to whom he is like. He's like a man that dug deep and he built his foundation on a rock. And he mm -hmm. said, when the flood came yeah, and beat vehemently against that house, it did not shake it because it was founded on a rock. You know what I'm saying? But he said, whoever come to me, they hear what I'm saying and they do nothing. They're like a foolish man who yeah. just simply built their house on the ground. And yes. when the flood came and beat vehemently against that house, the ruin of that house was great. So, Yes, the organization we call church, we have to do better. I agree. Yes, our leaders have to do better. I agree. However, at the same time, you have a responsibility for coming to Jesus, hearing what he says and doing what he says. It said, whosoever cometh, that's present tense, continual. That means constantly. You going back to Jesus right, over continue. and over and over, hearing what yes. he's saying and doing what he's saying. That's you studying that word. That's you reading that word. That's you praying. That's you meditating, hearing from the Lord, getting a rhema word. So when you rooted and grounded in that word like that, the Bible says, great peace to them that love my law and nothing shall offend them. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? And so yeah. once we get in that place, you know, for somebody like myself, I can remember, man, whenever I first got I'm, I'm young in the faith, I'm in, on fire for Jesus. I'm studying that word. I'm reading that word. I'm really getting into it. And I can remember this. The, the, the Lord started dealing with me. I was like, man, I believe I'm called to ministry. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm fresh in the kingdom. You know, I'm 22 years old. I got fire shut up in my bones. And I can remember going to my pastor at the time. And I can remember getting a meeting with him. And I sat down with him, you know. Um, and uh, he's like, yeah, what's going on, man? I was like, man, I got something I wanted to share with you, man. I've been I've been praying and the Lord been dealing with me, man. I just wanted to share this with you. And he's like, what, what, what's going on? So he sat back in his chair and I was like, well, you know, I prepared my whole little spiel. I'm about to tell him about this, this, this thing that the Lord been doing. And I was, I was prepared for him to be like, oh man, I'm so excited for you, man. I'm going to get you into my ministry classes and we're going to train you up and we go. That's what I was expecting. But I went to him and I shared this thing that I got going on on the inside, the Lord dealing with me. And I believe I've been called into ministry and I can remember him sitting back in his chair. And he said, oh, really? Yeah. And that was the last word he said to me in that meeting. And I can remember, you know, some, some other people knocked on the door, came in, and he started talking to them, and he's spending time with them. And, he and, it, and it, 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 I felt like I was in the room all alone. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dang, he's not even going to come back to me. And so I just kind of stood up and was like, man, I got I appreciate the time, man. I'm going to go ahead and, and move out. Okay, so now you, you have to understand several dynamics that's taking place there. Yeah. Number one, whenever a lot of young men come into the body of Christ, young men especially, mm -hmm. especially those of us who did not come up with our father, whenever we come into the body of Christ, pastor becomes dad. Wow. Okay, wow. so that's number one. Number two, Many of us that came up without dad experience a lot of abandonment issues, experience a lot of rejection. You know what I'm saying? And so in that moment, whenever I'm coming and I'm preparing what I'm preparing to say, and I say what I say, and the only thing I got was, oh, really? Oh, really? Hmm. 
abandonment, rejection, wow. and my nervous system. You being rejected again. Wow. You being abandoned again. Wow. And that was the most painful experience. Wow. And as I walked out of that office with my head down and I'm broken and I'm torn, the only thing that I had was the word of God. And because I was able to tap into what the word said about me, the word said, hey, 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 you are the light of the world, young man. Hey, 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 you are the salt of the earth, young man. Hey, 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 he that knew no sin was made sin that he would make you the righteousness of God. Hey, 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 whoever hearken diligently to my word, they shall be the head and not the tail. Hey, hey, above only and not beneath. And as I'm meditating on that word, that's what was able to get me through that circumstance and that situation. And God was able to use people to move me this way and move me that way and put me in the presence of my pastor, my pastor that God sent to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, pastor Michael D. Moore. And, and he became my pastor in 2003. And to this day, man, that man, he take good care of me. He. He makes sure I'm good, you know what I'm saying, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, you know what I'm saying, financially. What I'm talking about, that brother, man, he's been a tremendous father figure to me, an amazing pastor to me, a support system, a great example of a man who loves God, who loves people. You know, he's, man, I, that's the grace that God has had on my life because I was able to endure that storm that I went through, you know what I'm saying? So the point that I'm making to anybody that may have be, may be experiencing some sort of religious trauma, you need to get rooted and grounded in that word. You need to get rooted and grounded in love and you need to allow the Lord to be what you, the, he has to be to you, what you're expecting out of said leaders, because a lot of times we expect in pastor deacons and all other leaders in the church, we are expecting them to be God. And guess what? They ain't God. Wow. That's good. That's good. Uh, I'm, I'm go ahead and respond. You go ahead and respond first. I'm, I'm going to respond after you get through. Yeah. Uh, amen. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, thank, thank God that you, you leaned on, on the word and it wasn't just, just the emotion of what you felt. Um, and most of the time when we, even when we're feeling a certain way and we lean on the word, it's the word that gives us strength. Hallelujah. And I think Amen. God wasn't a turning away from the church. It was a turning to God to say, show me who I can sit under, who I can grow with and That's who it. can accept me as I am. That's good. Because I, I had a similar experience, but my, but my, but, but I'm glad. And Dennis, uh, we're ready for your question. You, do you want to come on and ask it? Or you want to call in, or do you want to just type it in? Let me know. But we, we, we got time to answer your question. Uh, but I had a similar experience, uh, LP, because uh, my cause a lot of those old was. Can I'm gonna first ask you how old was the, the first pastor that uh, that told you that that said uh, he was he was an old school brother. He was an old school brother. You know okay, what I'm saying? And, so, and that's what they did. Because mine did me the same way. Because he mine said, "Oh really?" And then kept on talking. And then wow. next week I came back, and next week I came back. But I was raised with a daddy. You know what I'm saying? So I was maybe a little bit more used to tough love or things of that sort. Uh, I knew it would be a little bit more persistent, things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? So I did, I handled it. So because his thought was, if he could discourage me, then I wasn't called. Mm. You see what I'm saying? That's what he thought. He was like, if I can if I can talk you out of it, then because because it, it's going to be a lot rougher <laughs> than what we're talking about here. If you think this is hurt, wait till they start talking about you. Ooh. Wait till they start treating you like a dog. Wait till they start scandalizing your name. If you Jeez. think that's all, yeah, see, that's that's why you can look at the same thing and look at it two different ways. You understand what I'm saying? Because I feel you as a young man. You know what I'm saying? As, I'm sorry, Pastor, I made up. Now. I feel you as a young man, right? You know, and and, and, and you're coming to somebody and you're, because I was 21. I'm same thing. But daddy was there. You know what I'm saying? Mama was that. I mean, I had a different, um, my seed was in it. I see you, Siobhan. I'm coming to you in a second. My seed had been prepared in a different soil, if you will. Absolutely, you know absolutely. So I, I was I was coming from a situation where I had just my mother had just died, right? So my mother had just died, yeah. and my daddy died whenever I was a whole yeah. lot younger. 
You feel me? So, and then at the same time, my mother dealt with mental health issues. And so she was kind of in and out mentally. And you get what I'm saying? So that's what caused a lot of the abandonment trauma that I had. You get what I'm saying? So I was constantly trying to attach. I was trying to attach, you know what I mean? And that's why I was not able, you know, whenever I wasn't able to make that attachment, it would just throw me, you know what I'm saying? And the Lord had to teach me like, Listen, you got you, you, you can't, you know, cursed is the man that trusts the man and make flesh his strength. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope yeah. is in the Lord. You get what I'm saying? I, I mean, ain't I, mean to cut you off, but I just had to no, bring no, that, no, bring that up. No, no. And, but that's what I wanted. The, you, you helped me prove my point and I appreciate you because everybody wants to put everything in a one size fits all category. You feel what I'm saying? Like they're hear your story and think that's the only story. Uh, hold on. Call one more time. I missed it, bro. Uh, Oh, he's calling now. Okay. All right. Hello? You there? Hello? Hold on. I might, I might, hold on. Here we go. There we go. Can we? I can. All right. Dennis, you there? All right, come on. I'm, I'm going to add you to the screen. Give me one second. We're going to take your call. Give me one second. I got to remember how to do this. You know, I'm, I don't have the, uh, I'm not the uh, most technological. But if you can't, so I can talk in the car so I wouldn't be having the conversation around the girls again. I got you. All right. So I think, uh, can, can y'all hear him talk? Can we hear you talk now? Let me see if they can hear you. Can y'all hear him? I got to add it to the screen. Okay, they can hear you now. Go ahead. Good evening, fellas. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, so my <clears throat> I have full custody of my daughters. They go see their mother on the weekend. Uh, Saturday, they leave. Sunday, they go to church, and then they come back home. Y'all, hold, hold on, hold on, Dennis. Y'all still hear him, right? Yes. yes. Okay, good, good. I t- okay, all right, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dennis. Go ahead. Okay. So my daughters go to church with their mother. They go to a church where you can't wear pants. Like, the women don't wear pants. Like, they're supposed to wear skirts. My daughters are also Division One basketball athletes. So my daughter's mother went on her Instagram, and she seen a picture of my daughter standing with a Nike sweatsuit on, and she told her that if she doesn't follow the rules of the church, she's not saved. Therefore, she has to leave her house and she's not welcomed on the weekend. What? And my daughter was, you know, we're, we're both, we were both frustrated. And I was like, you know, it's a girl sweatsuit. Like, this is not, it, it's cut like a girl. Because nobody wore pants like we wear pants today then. Yeah, this is cut different so that you know that it's for a girl and it's cut different so that you know that it's for a boy. And my daughter, who's 17 now, this is her last year of school. She's at a point where she's like, I don't want to go back to that church. If that's what God is, I don't want it. And of all the things that she could be doing, she was in the choir. She was liking going to church. She was there every Sunday. And y'all, and they're giving her a hard time about a pair of pants. It's like wow. she could be in all kind of mess. But this is a Division One basketball player, well, a future Division One basketball player with straight A's, and we're 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 giving her conflict about God over a pair of pants. Wow. And I'm trying to talk to her through it, like you know, well, um, don't blame God for you being upset right now. That church rules. In that place, That's good. like I never go to that church because I can't be phony with these people no more. Yeah. Like God ain't through with me yet. Like y'all, y- you can't play with me like somebody who don't know nothing. Yeah. So, you know, look, hey, my big brother's still working on me, y'all. I'm sorry. But, but it's so frustrating because I'm trying to tell her, like, hey, you know, it's still good for you to get a word every single week. Right. But how do you tell somebody to go to a place where you know that you're only loved conditionally? You'll throw me Ooh. out of your home on these weekends over a pair of pants? 
and yeah. we, we go sit down. We went and sat down yesterday. I'm sorry, I'm long winded. No, go ahead. We go sit down yesterday, and I'm having a conversation with our twin daughters and then their mom. And she kept talking to them about God. And my daughter expressed to her, like, well, I don't feel like you love me. Mm. And she still continued to talk about God. I'm like, look, I know it sounds crazy to people who, go, who, who believe, but put God to the side right now. Your daughter just said she doesn't believe that you love her. She didn't question God. She's questioning you. Mm. And you keep talking to her about God. And it's making me want to spaz out, but I'm staying calm because I have to be the cool head in the situation. But it's just like, I I can see how you'll run this person away. And that's not even like, I, I prefer to do everything on my own. Like, I know it's important to fellowship, but I'll read the Bible on my own. I'll do all these things on my own. And then when I have a question, I hit James up sometimes. Like, hey, what's this mean? Because he's not going to steer me wrong. And... It's not a show. He's just going to teach. That's why I was appreciative of LP tonight and the pastor that you had on. Like, they were teaching tonight. Sometimes you don't even have to ask no questions. You just let them go. They teaching tonight. They cooking. So it's, what do you tell somebody when they're absolutely right, but, you know, you're, you're holding God over their head in an incorrect form? You remember the movie Get Out? <laughs> Did you hear? Or is the form even incorrect? Am I wrong? Am you, I looking? No, at I'm it? saying. Do no, you do you remember the movie Get Out? Make sure. Can you can you hear uh, LP? He said he said. Did you remember the movie Get Out? I do remember Get Out, and he that's made, what it feel like a cult. He said you need to get out. <laughs> get out. <laughs> let, let, can, can you can you hear uh, can you hear them? Uh, El, uh, Dennis, can you hear them? I cannot. I'm going I'm gonna hang up so I can go back so I can listen. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm gonna let Evans go first because he's got to go. He's a. Uh, I'm gonna let him go first, and then we're gonna, we're gonna transition out. So uh, thank you for your call, Dennis. I, I appreciate you, bro. Okay. I appreciate you all. No problem, bro. We're gonna get you all some. All right. Go ahead, uh, uh, Pastor Evans. You go first because I know you got to go. You know, every every time I hear of a situation like that, I think about the traditions of men as compared to to the standard set by God. Um, I have been a part of a fellowship with a pastor who was maybe a couple of years older than me, but he was very traditional. Um, so when we left the church, my son could always go to activities, but I would never allow my daughters to go because I didn't want them to ever think that they had to put on pants to be accepted by God. Yeah. So, so I, I know firsthand when you have a traditional setting like that, um, but now this, this brother's daughter is old enough to understand the truth. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes you just have to say, baby, this is, this is what that church believes, but it's Keyword. not, a, but, but it is not according to the word of God. Keyword. Key and that's, and that's the thing. And I'm gonna bring you back in LP. Uh, doctor, you gotta go. I appreciate you, doc. We appreciate it. Listen, y'all tell Dr. Evans good night. He never put his cash. Good night, up. sir, man. It LP. was a pleasure meeting you, man. You're an amazing man of God. Thank you so very much for what you do. The pleasure was all man, my brother. I will do it again soon, man. Okay. I'll Thank you. All right. Likewise. Yeah. He's on, he's on a, he's on a work trip right now. Y'all. So he, uh, he took time out of his schedule to come on tonight and he's, I'm on longer than I normally am. So uh, I appreciate that. Uh, but this, and let me say this, we have, uh, churches are autonomous, right? They have their own policies that some, you know, unless they're part of a, you know, organization like church of God in Christ and they have you no know, trickle down effect with bishops and all of this other autocracy and all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, they're autonomous, which means we have the option of whether or not we want to go. I'm not going to ever get mad at somebody for what they're doing in their church. I'm just not going to go. I'm not going to put my mouth on the church because I'm too afraid of God. And I don't want God to get upset with me because he said at the end in his word that the gates of hell should not prevail against it. And he takes it personal because he did say upon this rock, I will build whose church? My church. Right now, sometimes we misrepresent it. We mishandle it. But the Bible teaches us. I like where you quote that scripture, and I like to quote a little bit too. But he said, uh, let the wheat and the tear grow together, and yes. I'll divide. It's a reason why he says let the wheat and the tear grow together. Why? Because they look just alike. They're very similar. They kind of, you know, they got a form of God, but they're not. They, but I'm not an ex. I don't have an expert eye. I can't necessarily tell. I might think I'm plucking a tear, but I'm actually pulling up wheat, right? So rather than mess up, I just let them grow. 
And rather than go to ABC Pentecostal Church, I'm going to go on over here to DFG Baptist Church, and I'm going to find a pastor who I believe in like you did. First pastor didn't receive you. He wasn't the soil you were supposed to grow in, LP. But when you went to Pastor Mike, whatever his name is, Pastor Michael, that was the soil that gave you the pot that you needed to grow in. We don't grow. Dennis, you, you're right. Your daughter is of age now. Her mama is going to regret it. <laughs> I hate to say it. She's probably going to regret it at some point because she would rather hold on to the religion than the relationship. Ooh. And notice what I said. Good God. They would rather hold. Oh, thank you. They would rather hold. I'm going to work on the relationship because how are you going to tell somebody about God and they sitting here and they haven't eaten in three days? Now, if I'm gonna help them receive, we're gonna say, come on, let me, you know, let me let's go up the street. Let's go to Wendy's right quick. I, I was passing by Wendy's one day and I shot somebody. Uh, I get it. I shot somebody, nobody. They were asking for, you know, they, he said, Can I get a four for four? I said, Yeah, eat twice. I gave him ten dollars. I said, eat twice. You don't have to eat four, you know, four, four is four dollars, but I gave him ten dollars. So you eat twice. Eat now and eat later. Now, if I run into him again and he's ready for the word, now I can feed him. I can't feed him because I'm too big. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, and some of us, some of the time, we think we have a zeal. We're so zealous, but you don't. And being zealous, sometimes you can be overzealous. Mm -hmm. And you're doing Absolutely. more harm than you are good. Sometimes it's just best. And like I told you in the, in the start of this conversation, when you're dealing with, I have a McKenzie, that's my baby. I have a Kennedy, that's my middle child. I have a Trey, that's my oldest child. I didn't let everybody hang around them when they were baby. Because they were delicate. And so many people in the body of Christ are babies and delicate and they need to be handled with care. And we put them in certain situations. But I'm gonna tell you, like, take the advice my mama had. And they'll, they'll be, I'm bringing you back in. We're about to cut this short, but I got it. I got some, I got the But uh, but uh, but uh take the advice my mother did. She would go to another house, see a plant, and saw how healthy that plant was, it would pluck that little vine or whatever it was, take it on and put that same vine in another pot and watch it grow. If you're not growing where you are, repot. Now you ain't got to get mad. You ain't got to get upset. You ain't got to give an exit speech. You know what I'm saying? In the Baptist church, we do this right here. You know, we put that little finger up and we walk out the church. Walk out and go find somewhere where you can grow, man. Because the kids well, see grow. It's a challenge for a lot of people to, to you know, that's, that's easier said than done. The reason why it's a challenge for a lot of people is because if you if you grew up in a very uh, toxic environment and you had very narcissistic parents or grandparents, yeah. Yeah. when you get into an environment like a church environment with a narcissistic leader, yeah. it's very familiar to you. Familiar. You get what I'm saying? And the brain connects familiarity to safety. Yeah. And so you have individuals that's in environments like that where they are being abused, where they're being taken advantage of, where they're being hurt and they won't leave because if you in a if you in a cult, one thing about it, if you are in a cult, if you go against the cult leader, the people within the congregation will attack you. Yeah. And if you do leave, they're going to alienate you. They're not going to talk to you. They're not going to deal with you. They're going to quote unquote put you out of fellowship. And yeah. that is painful yeah. whenever you, because that's the, the that, that act is a narcissistic act called stonewalling. Yeah. So whenever they stonewall you, that's emotional abuse. And so people are afraid of that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, there's a, there's an individual, uh, it's a rapper. I, I call his name Ja Rule. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He grew up in a very religious home and he was actually an up and coming minister. You know what I'm saying? And because of some very horrific treatment that they did to him and his mother, they put them out of fellowship. And that's what drove Ja Rule to go to the streets. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, it, it, it's simple and plain. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to a lot of those environments, they're very, they're overwhelmingly toxic. They're overwhelmingly narcissistic. And you got a lot of people who are codependent, empathic people and codependent, empathic people. They can't leave environments like that. 
they got to keep going back to the abuse. You get what I'm saying? So it's hard for them. But if they are to, it goes back to, if they get rooted and grounded in God's in word, word, in the word, they're able to pull away from individuals as well as groups of such. Yeah. And God is so faithful, he will always raise up somebody to us uh, to, to to rock with you, to to to, you to, to be with you, to, to pastor you, to teach you, to Despite assemble you. with you, Despite to build you. with you, all of that good stuff. You get what I'm saying? But we have to trust in what he said in his word. Absolutely. Hey, now this has been a great conversation tonight. It has been a great I, I knew we were gonna go over an hour, uh, and I was prepared for that. I try to keep the show less than an hour. Uh, and I, uh, LP, I appreciate you. You let you allow me to step out of my series this week and have a uh, because you got an all you got all of my business last week. You got all of my business. You hit you hit me a couple times. I'm gonna just say this uh, uh, too because you know you said people go with familiar, go with the familiar, and I'm, we're closing. And I, and I, I Donald Parsons said this, and it's always stuck with me. He said, "When you go with what you know, you always end up where you were." Mm. When you go mm. with what you know, when you when you continue to go with what you know. You always end up where you were 100 percent of the time so uh sometimes you gotta you know the children of israel i was talking about that this morning my devotion the children of israel walked around the same rock for 38 years seemed like somebody would have said don't this look like the same rock so if you keep going through <laughs> the same thing over and over again you keep seeing the same rock maybe it's time to change course and we got gps's now you know you can know the destiny you know what the destination looks like you know if it's going to be any traffic along the right line you know all that stuff so but it's good. Siobhan Reed, you are absolutely right. I can't stand manipulation because that method does not work on everybody. And we got people with degrees and, you know, smart, educated, you know, people nowadays, you know, you got to. But it's all good. I, we might, we might have to play with this. Is, I know you can't come back next week because you got your debate next week. But uh, we might have to play with this subject again uh, soon, go a little bit deeper. Because I, I might pull some testimonies out of my inbox and uh, let people say and share their convictions. Ah, it's been real, man. You got anything you want to say in closing? Man, I just want to I just want to say thank you again, man, for allowing me to be on your platform. Uh it's an amazing platform. I love the fact that you're bringing substance to uh the media, to the internet, you know what I'm saying? And that's absolutely amazing. And so to be on the platform, that means a lot to me, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate the audience, you know, for tuning in and hearing what we have to say. Um, and I, I look forward to the next opportunity to to be on this platform. Man, you know, you have a standing engagement. We can talk whenever we want to talk. You, you can sermonize with me or whatever. So we are, you always have a standing engagement. Dennis Pittman has one too. He's going to come on real soon. Uh, Dennis Pittman brings a very practical, you know what I like about Pitt? Pitt, uh, and I ain't never called him that before, but I hope I can call him that. Uh, <laughs> he has a very pure perspective. It has depth to it, but it also wants, it seeks understanding. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? He's not settling for no bull. If you ain't coming to him correct, uh, he's not going to fall for it. And and that's what this, you know, uh, I like to use that scripture, you know, when Jesus came down from the mountain of Mount of Transfiguration, mm -hmm. uh, he came, went into the valley, you know, uh, the man with the with the son uh, who he called lunatic, you know, and in yeah. that context, in that context, the disciples represented the church. Mm. The man, the man represented the world. His son represented a problem. And here the man was bringing the world, the church a problem, the world bringing the church a problem. And the church didn't have any answers for it. Wow. Your disciples couldn't help me, Jesus. <laughs> I went, I, look, I went to the church. You told me to go to the, I went to the church with my problem. I'm the world. But when I went to your church, your your people, the one you told me to go to, and I you ain't got to you ain't got to defend the church from me because I'm, I'm I'm church kid, right? But I took the church a problem, and the church couldn't help. And Jesus said, All right, "I got you. Don't worry about it." Because that, that's the thing. Ah, how old? When the church fails you, mm. there's Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. And so, I mean, I don't know if they were afraid, Lisa Smith. I think sometimes we, we try to operate in callings that we weren't called to operate in. 
We want to be jacks of all trades. I mean, that's a whole other subject. If you're not in, <laughs> why you put a daycare in a community full of old folks? I'm done. I'm moving on. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> you want that little money? I get it. All right, so uh, I, I'm just throwing all this shade. Let me stop. LP, what you going to say on the way out? Because I got to go. I'm tired. Of this. Hey, just uh, getting that word, man. Oh, Stay that word. Saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Y'all, y'all I'm, I'm done. I'm dead. Y'all kill me tonight. LP, uh, good night, bro. We'll catch up. Good night. All right. <laughs> All right, we have a winner tonight. Elder Lisa Smith uh, won the book, so I will be getting. She was making sure she's gonna beat me up to win that book. She was like, "This is the way it is." And sending me her little. All right, it's all right though. You won. You would. I almost tried to manipulate it to make make Dennis win because you tried to act like I was gonna cheat you or something. I'm joking. I'm really am joking. I really am. I'm playing. And I can joke with her like this, and she won't get mad. Some of y'all, some of us will get offended, but she knows I'm joking. But it has been a wonderful show. Uh, we dealt with some good topics tonight. Uh, if you have not caught the whole show, go catch the replay. I'll put it on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, all those things tomorrow. But I want to appreciate you all. And remember this, the world is changing. My question for you is, why do you remain the same? Y'all have a good night. International students.